Hi, and welcome back to Fundamentals of Bioinformatics. This is the third lecture in my quick introduction to Python 3 programming series. Um, in this lesson, we are going to uh, revisit some of the topics we covered at the end of the last lecture. Um, that's going to include a review and a look at some new ideas around for loops. We'll then talk about conditional statements, and then we're going to wrap up by bringing a lot of the pieces together that we've learned about over the last couple of lectures. Um, and we'll do that by writing a function that helps us translate DNA sequences into protein sequences. Okay, so I have now got my Jupyter Notebook set up um, and it is ready to start accepting input. Um, you should have a Jupyter Notebook up as well so you can follow along with these exercises. If you don't have one up, maybe pause the video for a minute now and do that. Okay, so when we wrapped up last time, we were looking at for loops. And so we may have done something like, um, created a list that has a few strings in it. Um, in this case, the strings are names. Um, and then we did something like for name in names, print um, so for name and names print hello comma name now hello uh, comma uh, name um, what that's going to do is it's actually going to print hello space name and that is because with print you can pass multiple strings in and by default Python will um, put a space between those as the separator so that's just a handy little trick to know um, and so if you see um, I uh, ran that and it executed as we would expect now I just want to show you one other thing here. So like when I say for name in names, there's nothing special about name here. So I could also just say for X in names and that will print the exact same thing when I run it. Um, so this, um, this here is just a variable name. This can be anything that you want, um, but um, good practice um, is to name your variables something that makes sense in the context. That'll help you when you come back and you're trying to um, look at your code later. Doesn't matter again for any practical reasons, Python doesn't care, but you'll care when you come back and try and read this later. Or somebody else will care when they come back and try and read your code. Um, the other thing that I want to revisit again here is the idea of indentation in Python. And that's going to be important um, multiple times um, in multiple contexts in your Python code. So the first time we're seeing that is in a for loop here. Um, but if we were, when we get to if statements a little bit later today, indentation is going to be important again. When we define functions, we looked at that quickly at the end of the last lecture. Um, indentation is very important in functions. Um, and so I just want to take another minute and look at how that works. Um, so you can see what, what I did here when I defined this for loop is I said for name in names colon. Um, and I then have four spaces, one, two, three, four. And then I put the body of the for loop. In other words, what I wanted to do in the for loop. Um, if I were to not include that indentation um, and try and run this, you would see that Python is going to give me an error. Um, this is a, a nicely named error for what it is. So it says this is an indentation error and it expected an indented block. Um, and that is because when you put that um, first line of the for loop, um, Python knows that you're defining a for loop and it expects to have at least one line indented below. Um, if we wanted to um, include something else, whoops, um, 
Um, if we wanted to include something else in there, um, so we wanted to say include the second line of text, we could include another indented block um, afterwards. And so if I were to run this, um, you can see now it's saying, hello, Alice, it's nice to see you again. Hello, Bob, it's nice to see you again. Hello, Carol, it's nice to see you again. Um, and maybe we want to go even one step further and have it print um, a just a new line after this. And so that'll group our text a little bit, um, uh, a little bit more nicely. Um, so now it'll say, hello, Alice, it's nice to see you again, followed by a new line. Um, and so that gives us an idea of um, the iterations through this for loop. Um, there's also a few other things we could do here if we wanted to um, make this work a little nicer. Um, and so if we wanted to make sure we we're always addressing people um, with uh, capital in the first letter of their name, we could use that title function that I showed you last time and execute that code again. Um, and that will capitalize that. Um, we could um, also do things like we could say um, that we want the end of this line to just be a space. Um, or maybe how about a period in a space? Execute that. Um, and you can see that like, so with the print function, we can um, play around here. We can get this to print things out nicer. There's a lot of built-in functionality. If you didn't know that, um, like you didn't know how to capitalize the first letter in um, a string in Python, you should just Google it. That's the best place to get started. Um, there's just endless information that you can find about Python online. Um, in fact, really the hardest part is figuring out, um, uh, yeah, sorry, got distracted by a notification there. Um, the Really the hardest part is figuring out what the most useful information is when you do a Google search. Um, you can often just find um, tons and tons of information. You might end up looking at some forum posts, Stack Overflow posts. Um, and so really the hardest part when you're, when you're learning is not necessarily finding the information, but it's figuring out which of that information is, um, is the best or is going to be helpful for you. Um, now, if you want it to, um, if you want Python to do something after a for loop, the way to achieve that would be to now have, oops, <laughs> um, would be to um, un, uh, put some text afterwards or put whatever it is that you want afterwards unindented. Um, and so that will then just run that, that one time. Um, on the other hand, if this were indented, so I'll indent that to the same level, you can probably imagine what's going to happen now. Um, each time through that for loop, it's going to print the text goodbye. And so what's happening now is on our first iteration for the, through the for loop, the variable name is equal to the first value on our list, Alice. So we run this first line of code, we run this second line of code, we print this new line um, that's achieved by just pr by just printing um, uh, an empty string or not or sorry printing nothing in this case um, and then we're printing goodbye and so it actually looks if we're reading this like the goodbye is grouped with hello bob but by looking at the code reading that code we know that it's actually grouped um, with the hello alice Again, if we want that to only happen after we're done, um, we would unindent that code. Um, and that will ensure that this only runs after we've iterated through all three names. Um, now, there's some other, um, there's some handy functionality that you may need to use um, in Python sometimes. Um, and so a good example of this is the range function that can be used. Um, it can be used in a lot of contexts, but it's common to use with um, for loops. Um, and so in Python, what this is, um, is a function where you can pass a value. So if I say range five and run that, 
Um, whoops, let me, uh, I'm going to um, just turn that result into a list. And so I'm calling list on that. Um, if I say list range five, that is going to um, create a new Python list that has five elements in it, um, starting with zero and going up to the number five. Um, if I were to change this to be say range 25, this will print um, or this will create a new list with the values zero through 24. Um, and so the way to think about this is we are providing, um, we're creating a range and the value that we're providing is the end of that range and it's not inclusive of that value. So it'll be up to that value. Um, we also mentioned that in Python, as in many programming languages, you typically start counting with the value zero rather than the value one. Um, so Python is a zero indexed language. Um, and so you'll see the first element in this list is um, the value zero. Um, and so this list goes from zero to 24. Um, that means there are 25 values in the list. Um, if you wanted to have this um, start at another number, so let's say I wanted it to start at five and uh, run to, through 25, you would provide um, a start for this. So you would say range five comma 25. And what that will do is it'll start counting at five and it'll end counting at 24. And so the start is inclusive and the end is exclusive. Um, so the um, what I mean by that is that the five is included, the start value is included, but the end value is not included in the output. Um, and so if you wanted to um, use this in a for loop, um, what you could do, um, let's say like we wanted to um, do something like compute the squares of the values um, 0 through 25. Um, we could say for number in range 25 print number times number. And what that will do is for each value between 0 and 25, or sorry, 0 and 24, it's going to square that number and print the result. Um, if we want to get a little bit more information, um, we could even um, put some text in here. We could say something like the square of Um, and that'll give us a little bit more information. So now it tells us the square of zero is zero, the square of one is one, the square of two is four, the square of three is nine, and so on. Um, there's a lot of applications for this um, that we will come back to a little bit later in the course. So um, this is something that you end up actually using quite a bit in practice in Python. Um, Let's see, so another thing that I wanna show you right now, this is getting into some more complex ideas, um, but let's change this here. So we say, um, uh, so we will now just um, again, um, I'm just doing this up to five, and so we'll just compute the square of the numbers between zero and five. What if you wanted to do something a little bit more complicated? What if you wanted to say multiply every number between zero and five by every other number between zero and five? Think about that for a minute. Maybe even think about like how you might write that code or if you've used Python a little bit, maybe take a minute and pause the video and try and figure that out on your own. Like I said, this is a little bit more of an advanced idea but what you would do in that case is you would use what's called a nested for loop. 
Um, and so what I would do is I would say for number in range, I'm going to say now for number one in range five, and then inside my for loop, I'm going to put another for loop. And then what I'll say is um, um, now there's one other thing that I need to do here. Think about, take a look at this and think about what that might be for a second. If I run this as is, I'm going to get an error. So I'll just run that and I'll show you the error that I get. And I got one of those indentation errors again. The reason I'm getting that indentation error here is because this for loop also needs to have an indented block. Um, and so I could do something like this. Now, so I'll indent that print line. And if I run this, you'll see that this is now going to give me all of the, num the product of uh, all of the numbers between 0 and 5 by all of the other numbers between 0 and 5. Now, you can do some pretty fancy stuff here. Um, so, for example, um, if you want some things to print only in one of these loops, um, you can uh, indent it only with respect to that for loop. Um, so I could say something here like print um, um, I could say print number one is um, and then I, in here I can say print number two is um, and this will be a lot of text this time but if I run that um, you'll see that now it says number one is zero number two is zero the product of zero and zero is zero um, then what you'll notice is like this number one is zero doesn't get printed again down here. This just says now number two is zero. Um, to make this look a little bit uh, easier to interpret, so I'm going to put some spaces in here. And so if I run this again, you can see that the um, you can see that this first for loop um, has. Um, uh, has is just printing number one is zero. Second time, uh, and then when we get to that second for loop, that inner for loop, um, it says number two is zero, um, and then the product of zero and zero is zero. Number two is one. The product of zero and zero, uh, zero and one is zero, and so on. Um, this goes all the way through until we get to that uh, next time through our outer for loop where it says number one is one. Um, on the other hand, if I had taken this print line and put it down here, um, you can see that each time through this inner for loop now, it's printing this information about what number one is, what number two is, and what the product of those is. Here again, number one, number two, the product. Um, so take a minute and play around with this a little bit. Um, you can put um, information in these different um, regions so that you can have it um, print this out when you want and what you want. Um, similarly, you could also um, put some uh, print statements at, uh, after that inner for loop. Um, so I could say um, done computing products for number one. Or let's do, uh, let's put our, 
Um, how about this? We'll say for number one equals number one. Um, and so you can see now what we have up here prints before the inner for loop runs. What we have down here prints after the inner for loop runs. Um, so again, that's a pretty um, tough concept to think about. Um, I just I just wanted to put this out there because it's something we're going to see when we start looking at pairwise sequence alignments. I'm not going to ask you to um, to uh, ever create one of these nested for loops, but it is a helpful thing just to um, be aware of so that when you encounter this, you'll have an idea of what's happening. Okay, we can see I got a ton of output from that one. Okay, so now I want to move on. Um, and, you know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new notebook here. Um, just so it's a little bit cleaner. Um, I'm going to call this one Bio450 Python. Conditionals. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about conditional statements in Python. And what that means is um, statements that only run at certain times, only run when some condition is met. Um, before we can do that, we have to talk about um, several of the comparison operators in Python 3. Um, so. Um, Python defines operators for um, testing for equality, for inequality, um, for greater than, less than, and so on. There's other uh, um, uh, conditional or uh, sorry, other comparisons that you can run as well. Um, and the way that these work um, is, um, for example, for an equality operator, we might say four equals equals four. Um, and so that double equal sign is used when you want to do a comparison. Um, and if I were to run that, um, you see that I get a new type of value back. Um, and so just like Python is aware of integers and floats and strings and lists, um, another type of value that Python is aware of is a Boolean value. Um, and a Boolean value would be either true or false. And so a Boolean can have exactly two, uh, sorry, a Boolean can have one of exactly two values. It can only ever be true or false. Um, and so if I were to change this to say four, to test whether four is equal to five, I would get false in that case. Um, and so this is the Python equality operator. Um, in addition to the value that's being compared, um, Python will often also consider the type. Um, and so, for example, if I were to say the integer for uh, test for equality with the string for, what do you think I'll get in this case? If I run that, I'll see that we get false. And that is because, as far as Python is concerned, the number for is not equal to the string for. The number four is equal to the number four. Um, another operator that Python defines is the uh, not equal operator. And so this is the inequality operator. Um, and this is represented with the exclama uh, exclamation point followed by the equal sign. Um, and so if I say four not equal to four, I would get false. If I say four not equal to five, then I get true. If I say four not equal to, sorry, integer four not equal to the string four, I'll get true um, since Python considers those to not be equal to one another. Um, Python also defines greater than operator, so that is simply the greater than symbol. So if we were to say four is greater than four, we would of course get false. 
if we were to say four is greater than three, we would get true. Um, Python also defines a greater than or equal to operator. And so that is <clears throat> represented with the greater than symbol followed by the equal symbol. And so in this case, we would get true because four is of course greater than or equal to four. Um, if we were to put five in here, we would get false. Um, similarly, Python defines the less than operator. Um, so we would get false if we said uh, four is less than four. Um, if we say four is less than five, we'll get true. Um, and Python defines a less than equal operator. And so here, if we say four is less than or equal to four, we will of course get true. So where this gets really powerful is when we combine it with conditional statements in Python. Um, and so a conditional statement, um, the simplest conditional statement in Python is if. And so we can say something like if four is equal to four, Oops, I'm going to use double quotes there. Um, what happens here, so the way that this works is I have, I'm saying if, and then I'm providing some statement that will evaluate to either true or false. So some, some statement that evaluates to a Boolean value. Um, and I could use any of these operators um, and also other operators that we haven't um, covered yet, um, followed by the colon. So that's similar to a for loop and a function. Um, and then followed by an indented block and then something that I want Python to do. Um, and so the catch here um, is that if that um, the text in this block or the code in this block only executes if this uh, conditional statement evaluates to true. Um, and so you'll see if I say if four equals equals five, print their equal, nothing prints out this time because this statement evaluated to false. Um, if we were to, um, let's see, so let's say we change this again, um, then we'll get this printing out again. Um, another handy thing that you can do is, and this is a um, slightly more complex conditional statement, um, is that you can add an else in here. Um, and so what happens in this case um, is that Python will um, evaluate this statement. If it evaluates to true, it'll execute what is in the if block. And so in this if indented block, if it doesn't evaluate the true, if this if this up here does not evaluate the true, it'll execute what's in the else block. Um, and so here, just to try this one out again, um, in this case, five is equal to five. Um, if we were to put six here, then we would, um, this statement would evaluate to false, so it would not run what's in the if block, it will instead run what's in the else block. Um, so often you will not use these with um, specific values, um, but you might define a variable somewhere else. Like we might say um, my value equals 42, um, and then we might say something like if um, so we would evaluate this um, using some variable. And so if this variable is defined elsewhere in the code, 
um, you know, we won't necessarily know exactly what it's going to be when we get to this block. And so that's really the role of a conditional statement is when um, my value in this case can change. And sometimes when we get to this line of code, it might be equal to 42 and other times it might not be equal to 42. Um, let's see, another thing that's worth noting is just like with for loops, um, we could um, use, we could put multiple lines of code um, in this block. Um, and so we could say, um, um, we could do something like this. And so this will now print out um, both lines of code that are in that block. Um, okay, so that is a quick introduction to how conditionals work in Python. We're going to revisit this um, a little bit later when we do um, a slightly more complex um, example where we start trying to pull some of these ideas together. Um, for now, I'm just going to save these notebooks that I created and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create one more new notebook. Actually, might not be the last new notebook I create today. And I want to introduce one last data type. Um, I have a little spelling error there. Um, one last data type um, in Python, and that is the Python dictionary. Um, and so um, what that is, is it's a way to associate values with keys. And so it essentially provides, um, just like you might think of a dictionary, um, like a language dictionary, it allows you to look up a value and get um, some other value that's associated with it. Um, and so the way that you would define a dictionary in Python, um, like let's say we had, um, you wanted to keep track of say favorite colors for um, our three individuals, Alice, and let's say Alice's favorite color is blue, Bob's favorite color is green, and Carol's favorite color is purple. Um, what this would allow you to do is you could now look values up in this dictionary. So if you wanted to know, say, what Bob's favorite color is, you could look values up and you'll notice that this is a similar syntax that we used when we were looking up values in a list. Um, but here we're looking it up by the key in the dictionary. Um, and so the, the way that this syntax works, and I'm just gonna split it over multiple lines to make it a little easier, is you provide a key and then you provide a value associated with that key. In my case, the keys and the values are both strings, um, but these can be different data types. And so these can be integers, um, for example, the keys or the values, or both the keys and the values could be integers. Um, they could be lists, um, or sorry, the um, values could be lists, the keys cannot be lists. Um, but this is a convenient way to be able to look values up, or sorry, look keys up and get some value that's associated with them. Um, and so here I'm just showing you how to create a dictionary and how to look something up in a dictionary. Um, if we wanted to, um, well, let me leave it there for right now and I'm going to show you how we can use this in another example. Since this lecture is getting a little bit long, I'm going to leave it there and I'll pick up with this other example next time uh, in a final short video on Python programming.